Good evening, everyone. Tonight is the Monday evening, the 21st of November. I'm preparing this for the 22nd, Tuesday morning. We just heard a horrendous account of um, the students in Idaho getting murdered college students. You know, when you hear an account like that, doesn't that pretty well dispel the person determines their own destiny? Who would pick that kind of destiny to be stabbed to death? You know, it's a reaffirmation of the scripture that says that he works all things after the counsel of his own will. That includes both good things and bad things. So people that want to have the attitude that they can control their own destiny through their own choices is really asinine. I'm offering today a free book called The Lies of Free Will. Do you control your own destiny? If you email me, go to LarryWPhillips.com. Go to our contact section, say I'd like your book. I'll be happy to send it to you in a PDF format. I was 37 years old before I realized that I didn't control my own destiny. I used to be a huge goal setter. I would set all of these goals, you know, in every area of my life, my recreational life, my social life, my educational life, my career, my financial life. And the more I set goals, the more I found out I couldn't control whether they happened or not. Sometimes the harder I worked, the less I would make. And then when I would kick back and not really focus on money or all this stuff, it would just flow to me. That's another proof that God's in charge of what's happened. <clears throat> As it relates to salvation, the same is the case. For by grace are you saved through faith, not of works. Lest any man should boast, the Bible says. The Pharisees were really good about setting forth a doctrine of works. They said you had to do all these things to be saved. You had to be circumcised. You had to keep the law, every jot and tittle of the law. They even had it down as to how far you could walk on the Sabbath day. They were legalists, and if somebody broke one of their little laws, then the wrath of the pharisaical uh, theologians would come down on them. That's what we have today in a lot of theological circles as well. You have to subscribe to the Westminster Confession of Faith or the Cans of Dort or the Heidelberg Confession, or the London Baptist Confession, or the Philadelphia Confession, where you have to come under the rules of decorum of the church. Does that sound familiar? Oh, by the way, you also have to, you have to agree to tithe. <laughs> You know, I've not I've not met very many people that actually tithe. Because tithing means you have to give ten percent of everything. That means ten percent of your time, ten percent of your food, ten percent of your um, everything, ten percent of your gasoline, ten percent of your um, energies. 
ten percent of your uh, everything, ten percent of everything, if you're going to be a perfect tither, you know. Bible says, "Blessed are those that give." <laughs> it's more blessed to give than receive. The Bible says. <clears throat> A lot of people want to be on the taking end, especially in so-called ministries when they're begging for money all the time. I can just hear you right now saying, wow, this is not a very uplifting devotional tonight. I'm just being a re- I'm being in the reality of the Bible tonight. The Bible says that even the bounds of our habitation are in his control. The Bible says, in him we live and move and have our very being. And so when I get around these free willers, it kind of makes me nauseous. And they talk about them executing their free will and making a decision to let Jesus in their hearts. If they could let the God of the universe do anything. Well, there are many scriptures that point out the fact that it is not of him that runneth, nor of him that willeth, but God that showeth mercy. You know, and so I went into a office the other day. They had a big sign in there. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him has everlasting life. But I could not engage anyone enough to ask them who are the whosoever's that believe on him, and where does faith come from? Does faith come from ourselves by us drumming up a little faith so we can believe on Jesus Christ? Or was faith, faith originate from Christ himself? Scripture says he's the author and the finish of our faith. With the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despised his shame, and sat down at the right hand of God. You know, he's the one who was wounded for our transgressions. He's the one that was bruised for our iniquities, and by his stripes we were healed. Not by anything that we did. Jesus paid it all. So that's what's on my mind tonight. There's a lot of Arminians out there that want to talk about, you know, all these great things they're doing for God. And really they're lying about the Bible in the process. I hope you have a good day today and be thankful that you don't have to rely upon something that doesn't exist. And that is your so-called free will. God bless.